Hey there, it's Brandy again. So I mentioned in a previous video that I like to do affirmation writing in junction with my gratitude journaling, right? So affirming myself and thanking God. I realized that affirmation journaling for me comes in a lot of different forms and it doesn't always happen in my affirmation journal. And I wanted to share one of the tools that I use to do affirmation writing. Uh, it's actually the tool that I use now to create my affirmations. Sometimes you want to create affirmations. You don't always want to go to Google to find words to affirm yourself because then it doesn't feel like it's coming from you. And there is an exercise that Lisa Nichols uh, created or shares um, where you get to the root of your negative self-talk and flip that as a way to combat the repeating negative thoughts that you're hearing. She says this is using some science, I'm not a science buff, but some science uh, with cognitive dissonance. So you're reassociating the way your brain, uh, or you're reassociating that negative thought with more positive thoughts. And so you're bombarding your, your mind with the positive thoughts. And so that's for me how I come up with new affirmations to then sing to myself in the shower or write um, or add to a vision board put positive words everywhere right so I'm going to show you what that exercise looks like for me I just made a worksheet for it because I like things to be designed out and I call it belief busting and building I, I don't remember what she calls it but I start out the exercise by writing a negative self-belief or negative thought that's reoccurring for me and the way that it works is you write the lie in pencil and I have it on this yellow dot line you write the lie in pencil and then you write the truth four times after that. And I always combine writing, doing the exercise in writing as well as doing it in spoken word. And that's how it looks when I do it. Like usually it's tearful and I'm just like, oh, old lie. And then I'm like the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. And you just keep saying it until it feels real. So I'll give you an example of some that I'm still currently working on and then some that I have actually healed through uh, healed past, I should say, uh, some negative thoughts are no longer pervasive. The lie that I am still working on and getting closer to uh, remedying in my mind is I have a difficult relationship with food. There have been years and years where I've struggled with trying to prove myself with food, using food as a tool for belonging, avoiding food uh, to avoid the the shame and guilt and decision making that comes along with food. And it's even more frustrating being a relatively fit looking person to have food issues because people think oh you're small it's fine eat all the cake I don't even know why you're eating salads all the time and there's a lot of judgment that comes with being a healthy looking person who doesn't always feel healthy to which I'd like to believe uh, which I feels more true for me now is I have a healthy relationship with food and my body is easy that feels so much more true for me uh, but the way that it started it didn't I was like writing that sentence felt like yeah, I have a healthy relationship with food. That sounds cute. Um, but it's true for me now. Like, I have grown a healthier relationship with food. And my body is easy. So that's that's what that exercise looks like. So I wrote the truth and bombarded it. Excuse me, wrote this lie that was feeling true for me. Because it's not true. Um, and bombarded it with what my inner truth is. So some of these things I'm working on, I'll tell you some of the current limiting negative thoughts that I have. Um... Like I have a difficult relationship with food when I really don't. Or I'm not sure how I will make my first million dollars. <laughs> because apparently that is a dilemma in my life. Um, and the truth for me really is God is delivering the divine means through which I will grow wealth. That's true. That feels true. That's true. I just have to keep saying it and affirming that um, in moments where my doubt wavers in. Other limiting self-beliefs. Um, I am unsure about my relationship sometimes. Which is funny because I wrote this uh, not too long before, figuring it all out and getting married to my boo. And the personal truth that helped me get through that thought pattern was I have a divinely, I have been divinely paired with a fellow human being with whom I can grow most. And I have been divinely paired. And the beautiful thing, I wish I had a pencil with me. The beautiful thing about writing uh, this old lie uh, in pencil is that you can erase this when it's no longer true. When you realize that all along it was a lie. So I can literally go and erase I'm unsure about my relationship sometimes. It's not true. Like I am committed and sure that I'm with the person who I can grow most. 
This line I'm still working on. I'm not as stylish as I want to be. And my new personal truth I'm working to manifest is that I effortlessly express my creativity with my style. With style and flair. So I effortlessly express my creativity with style and flair. Effortlessly. Some other things I'm dealing with. I'm not very sexual and I need to get back in touch with my sensuality. Where the truth is I'm deeply connected to my sensual nature and celebrate my sexuality. Or I'm off track on my life's purpose because I'm not married and don't have kids. Obviously, you did this one before I was married. Um, I'm exactly where I need to be at this age to, to reach my greatness, is my truth. These are some of my current beliefs that I am working on. Um, and obviously not the most current because I haven't updated that since January. Now let's look at some beliefs that I have busted and the beliefs that I've built in their place. It's going to be hard to read this because the old ones were in pencil and erased. But, for example, I am not enough. I am unsure of myself. That is is not true and I don't know how it ever was true um <laughs> that sounds crazy they don't know my god the truth is I am perfectly imperfect wonderfully made by god and worthy of love joy and success that is my truth I stand in that truth that is not a wavering truth that is the truth because that's what the truth is here's what I used to tell myself before I started doing aerial acrobatics the lie was I have no upper body strength and I would literally say that all the time like, I would be struggling to open a jar of pickles and say, I have no upper body strength. Can someone help me? Or not a jar of pickles. I'm not out here eating pickles like that. But to lift something, I would get home and ring the doorbell and ask my guy to carry my bag upstairs because I have no upper body strength. I was like, you know what? That is a lie. And it's lazy. So the truth that I wrote for myself is I can lift 120 pounds and do amazing aerial. I wrote that before I even started aerial acrobatics class. Now, I still need a mat under me when I'm in aerial class, and I can still have accents, but I can lift 120 pounds, which is about how much I weigh. And I can do amazing aerial, much more amazing than someone who has never taken a lesson. But all the same, I have upper body strength. I can hold myself up for quite some time. And so this exercise helped me to, you know, step into the class with confidence. So I wouldn't walk into class like, oh, I can't do that because I have no upper body strength. It's a lie that I'm telling myself that's limiting me from even trying to do things. When you get your lies out of your head, those negative pervasive thoughts out of your head, and put them on paper, you can start to approach them as things that can be altered rather than things that are immobile. So in your head, it's like, oh, this is the truth because I believe it. And when you write it down, especially in pencil, you can work around that, right? It's an obstacle that you can tackle. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like thumbing through all the sheets of this exercise that I've done and this is just since I formalized it so prior to design got a format through which I could do this exercise um I was doing it in journals it's funny I actually went to awesomeness fest in 2014 it was sitting in front of Lisa Nichols um during this session I was literally sitting on the floor at her feet and she kept talking about this this intense you know other session that you can invest in and grow exponentially I was like oh man I can't afford that right now. And so I literally sat in front of her and journaled, like as she's talking, just wrote over and over and over, like, I can afford personal development. I can afford personal development. I can afford per Wrote it over and 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 over. This is the actual journal. You can see the date, November 2014. I was just writing. I can afford personal development over and over and over just to affirm that for myself. Did not end up going to that workshop, but I have since <laughs> invested a lot of money, um, thousands of dollars in my own personal growth and development because what is a more worthy cause to invest in than yourself? Anywho, that was a tangent. Belief, busting, and building. If you want to work through the negative limiting beliefs that you have swirling around in your mind, I suggest looking up the exercise. Uh, Lisa Nichols has a video where she walks you through the entire process. It's so much more eloquent than this video. But if you want a template to use for doing the exercise, hit me up and I can send you this PDF. All right. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for listening.